Hey guys, Dr. Berg here. In this video, we're going to talk about something very, very cool. It's called lactic acid. I don't know if you ever heard of that before, but lactic acid bacteria is probably one of your most friendly bacteria that you have in your gut. And this is what it looks like right here. This is lactic acid. This is called kombucha tea. And uh, it's, it looks disgusting. It has like a fungus in there. They're little tiny friendly microbes. So these little friendly guys will create a really powerful a beneficial acid that goes in your gut. First of all, they help neutralize the toxic bacteria, so they're actually good to support your immune system. They deodorize bad smells, so they actually get rid of rotten smells that are in your colon. So if, when you go to the bathroom, if you have a bad smell, you need to consume some lactic acid from something like kombucha tea. And they also uh, enhance the nutritional benefit of your foods. Because it's an acid, it allows you to absorb more proteins, amino acid, uh, like also uh, minerals, trace minerals, calcium, zinc. So this enhances the nutritional value of the food that you already eat. If your colon is not acid enough, you're not going to be able to break down food. So this ensures that the pH is correct in the large and small intestine. So it also helps your skin, it's a blood cleanser, it's a colon cleanser like I said. It loves mucous membranes. So in your colon you have these layers of mucous membranes and also in your mouth and the different parts of your body and your sinuses. This is wonderful to support the mucous membrane. So it's an overall great thing for your immune system. Now what's interesting is this stuff is made from white sugar and black tea. So you take, and I'll actually put the recipe below in the link, but you basically take sugar and you dissolve it in water and you put black tea in it with caffeine and then you let it cool down and you put these little, this little fungus in here, looks disgusting, and then the fungus starts eating up the caffeine and the tea and the sugar and converts it into lactic acid. Pretty wild. So we're basically consuming kind of the waste product from these microbes with a lot of good benefits. So you can also get this from consuming pickles, right? You can also get it from uh, kefir, which is a type of sour yogurt. You can get it from yogurt. You can get it from pickled vegetables. And my favorite, which is sauerkraut. So start consuming these fermented foods and enhance the benefit from your food. Thanks for watching. Is consuming yogurt the best way to get your probiotics? Well, the answer is no, it's not. Unfortunately, the bacteria in yogurt gets killed at the stomach level. Not to mention there's limited strains of microbes in yogurt. I mean, sometimes there's two, sometimes there's three. Uh, if you're lucky, you might have five or six. And the way that they rate these microbes is by a unit called CF. U, and that stands for colony forming units. And so yogurt usually has about, I don't know, 3.6 CFUs. But here's the problem. Most yogurt out there is pasteurized and these microbes do not survive heat. So basically you're consuming dead bacteria, not to mention the extra lactose, which so many people have lactose intolerance. So they have digestive issues from that. Not to mention casein allergies, it's the protein in milk. Many people are sensitive to that as well. And we won't even talk about the added amount of sugar that they put in yogurt. Now I am speaking generally, there are certain yogurts out there that are way better than others, uh, like the Bulgarian yogurt, right? That's an awesome product. But the conventional yogurts are not gonna give you the probiotics that you really need. Now, what about kefir? Okay, well, kefir is very different than yogurt. The way they make kefir is with a kefir grain, which are different strains of microorganisms, which includes friendly yeast. But the word kefir is a Turkish word that means feel good after a meal. And this is probably why people uh, like consuming probiotics because it just makes their stomach feel better. And what goes on with your digestive system has a huge influence on what's going on up here. You're gonna feel better in your head if things are better in your stomach. Now, kefir compared to yogurt has like nine times the CFUs. It has like 27 billion CFUs as compared to like 3.6 billion for yogurt. And the lactose, the milk sugar, is almost non-existent because 
the lactic acid bacteria eat up uh, this lactose milk sugar. And so if you are lactose intolerant, you'll have much less of a problem. And so you have more friendly bacteria and you have a lot of different diversity. You have many different uh, types of strains that are very beneficial to your gut. So kefir is a much better option, but obviously make sure you just get the plain one, not the one with added sugar. And I would make sure that it's organic and from cows that are grass-fed or even sheep or goats that are grass-fed. But kefir is a really good one to get your probiotics. Now, what about sauerkraut? Well, sauerkraut is not a fermented dairy product. You're fermenting cabbage. And even though per serving size, sauerkraut only has like 3 billion CFUs, the juice from the sauerkraut uh, per tablespoon has like 10 billion CFUs. And if you're going to consume sauerkraut, you usually have more than one tablespoon. And so you're going to have a lot more friendly bacteria when you have sauerkraut. Make sure when you get sauerkraut that it's not pasteurized, okay, because the heat kills the microbes. But sauerkraut also has the probiotic. It has the fiber that feeds your microbes that help with other ways like blood sugars. It's loaded with vitamin K1, vitamin K2, which is very unique because vitamin K2 helps transport calcium um, out of the wrong places in your body. So it gets it out of the soft tissue and it puts it back in the bone. It also has a lot of potassium and even some really cool phytonutrients like lutein and zeaxanthin, which are really good for your eyes. And another unique thing about sauerkraut is the vitamin U, okay? Now you might say, well, I've never heard of vitamin U. Well, vitamin U is good for everything digestion, all sorts of digestive problems from diverticulitis to irritable bowel syndrome, to bloating, to ulcers, anything inflammation in your gut, vitamin U can help. And that leads me to the next cabbage fermentation product, kimchi. Now, kimchi is a powerhouse when you're talking about superfoods. Um, it's fermented cabbage with red chili. Sometimes they put radish in there, which is a superfood. Radishes are fascinating because they have a very potent anti-cancer effects. They're really good for extracting deep mucus inside your body. Fantastic for the liver. And they are a cruciferous. Now, kimchi also has garlic, which is by itself one of the best things for viral infections and when so many other health benefits. Then you have ginger, okay, which is another superfood, good for your digestion. And sea salt. Now there's many other things they'll put in uh, kimchi, but um, it's a superfood. It's also really good for sinus infections. I've done a video on it. I will put that link down below. Uh, one serving size, like one cup, will give you about 5 billion CFUs. But the juice from kimchi probably is equivalent, if not more, to the sauerkraut juice. Now, kimchi has some very unique microorganisms that are different from other fermented products, uh, especially in the area of lactic acid bacteria. And so they can create different effects. Kimchi is super high in vitamin C, just like sauerkraut, super high in K1, vitamin K2, as well as potassium and B vitamins. Now, relating to pickles, okay, I want to just mention something about pickles. There's two different ways they make pickles. One is through vinegar, which actually is, is pretty good, but the lacto-fermented pickles are much better because they're going to give you the probiotics that are going to help you. Just make sure they're unpasteurized, they're not uh, cooked, and you have to keep them in the refrigerator or root cellar to preserve them. Now, if you haven't seen my video on kimchi, I think you should watch it. It's pretty interesting. Check it out. I put it right here.